All right, welcome back. We have another knife. You didn't see that coming. Um, Demco's really been occupying the pocket. You're probably getting tired of hearing it, like you were tired of hearing about the bug out before, but man, what a great knife. Of course, I dink that twice in a row, but that's how it goes. You get the real thing on this video. I know a lot of these guys uh, that do the reviews are just on a different level and look i'm just a guy that loves knives i'm not a in the industry i buy all these knives that are on this uh channel um and you know this might just be one of the ones that i need to open off screen here but let me think about the best way to get into this guy so one of the things i do love about the demco is the blade just goes where you point it to every time with that shark's foot. It's just my favorite packaging opening blade ever. You know what? Let me throw something in here that kind of competes with it. And no surprise, because who, uh, who would have designed it but um, Andrew Demko himself. Uh, the Tough Light, very similar in how I can do stuff, but just a little less like sharp at the edge here this thing always feels like a razor blade to me um whereas the uh um you can do it um the 80 20.5 um just feels a little safer for like common use not in the garage not in the toolbox when i'm just doing stuff like opening boxes so while extracting this knife i'm gonna go in by hand from here Sure, there's a better way of opening these boxes, but as my wife will tell you, I'm usually only good at doing one thing at a time, and right now I'm just talking. <laughs> so, okay, no blood yet on this uh, episode. Um, let's go ahead and get this guy open as well, very carefully here. I just trust myself with that edge better than anything else. You can see the gunk on there because I've been using it so much. Ah. Okay, cool. Um, I wasn't sure what this was at first, but oof, there it is. My first Rockstead. I've watched a lot of videos about these over time, and uh, yeah, I always hoped one would come together, and one popped up on Blade Forums and decided to take the plunge. Now, what's tripping me out here is this is the... Let me be really careful here, because this is feels like some sort of original packaging that's been used on the outside here. So I don't really want to tear it if so, because I don't really know what I'm getting into here. Let me try and just be a little extra careful here, and sorry for the, the time it's taking to extract, but I hope you can appreciate when you hear something like Rockstead that you don't rush it. As much as I love you all, for stopping by and checking it out and enjoying these uh, unboxings and reviews with me. Um, gotta, gotta be smart here on these. These are not cheap. I'll definitely be taking nice care of that. So yeah, it's interesting. Um, this one does have a hole in the packaging there, but I think this one was lightly carried. This is a Rockstead, and I'm gonna pro totally butcher the name here, but Higo 2 um, in ZDP 189 with the titanium handle, and it's the polished titanium. I had never seen a video on this model, so I'd never seen this model reviewed. Um, it's a little less expensive than the ones that you typically see get reviewed. Um, so MSRP is 1250 on this model, whereas some of the ones you'll see out there are 1500, 2000. Um, so Rockstead, amazing, amazing manufacturer that does some very unique things, or at least some very, I don't know if you want to call it expensive, but high finish things that really have impressed me. Um, so I've been trying to find one for a while. Um, including the way that they finish the knife is just, I don't want to say unparalleled, but you know, it's certainly uh, on a, uh, another level. So, wow. You know, it 
I expected this to be more of a mirror like metal looking finish like the color of this blade and what's standing out to me right away is that this is much darker in color than I expected which I'm really pleased with because I don't really like like a mirror polished finish so I'm going to try and find something for you here's like a nice mirror polished finish and actually you'll see it against its own blade but the color of the handle is much darker than I expected. So I'm really pleased with that. That is really cool. Sorry that we're five minutes in and you haven't seen this. I'm going to just move a lamp so we can see this knife a little better. And the reason for that is that the, the knife is so deep in its finish. You can hear the lamp coming over. The knife is so deep in its finish, I'm concerned you're not going to be able to see it because I'm having trouble seeing it and I'm in the room. So I've just changed the lighting to accommodate the knife better. So now you can hopefully see it a little better. Maybe I'll pull out the uh, tough light finish again. But you can see how dark that is. And I really like it. It is nice. So that's cool. I was not sure about the polish finish on the handle. Um, I, I got to admit, I bought it in spite of that or despite that. But now that I have it in hand and you're going to see right away the knife's been in the mailbox. So it's really cold. It's like 40 degrees out today. Um, so excuse some of the fingerprints as it warms up in my hand, but that'll be gone by the end of this video. I'm just going to give it a little wipe here. Um, but yeah, that finish is really beautiful, dark, elegant, and what I've heard about these, kind of like a Chris Reeves or a Hinderer, is that they, the, the action as they wheel out is supposed to be really nice. So let's go ahead and open the knife really quickly, make sure everything looks good, and get a first experience. As described. Now I'm gonna have to be a little careful on this uh, edge for multiple reasons. One, because they're freaking sharp. And one of the things I'm noticing right away is the thinness behind the edge is amazing. Um, you know, the grind on this, you don't have a separate grind at the bottom. It's one continuous grind from the middle of the knife down to the bottom. And that is quite impressive. It's knocked down. It's not as uh, rounded off as a hinderer. I just did an opening of a hinderer. Um, and I noticed like it's a little it's more square feeling than the hinderer. The hinderer feels more rounded off than this knife. Um, but it does feel really nice in hand. Everything, even though it looks a little boxy, everything's really nicely rounded off. So as you can possibly see there, if you can actually see into the depths of this titanium finish. Let's get the name of that again really quickly off the package. It just says titanium handle, but this polished titanium handle is just crazy deep and like almost hard to see because it's so like deep and black and polished. It's like a mirror that doesn't let light back out of it. It's one of the weirdest effects I've seen, especially with the, with the, um, you know, kind of wavy texturing to it. And it, so it feels really nice in hand. This is one of the most impressive, like beautiful knives I've ever seen in person. Um, and yeah, the action is as promised, as described by others, truly phenomenal. The knife came perfectly centered. And I think the seller said there may be some signs of carry, like on the pocket clip. Let me give it a little wipe down, make sure we're not just seeing something on there. Maybe just a touch right there or something. But generally, I'd say this is a 
sort of as new experience. Reminds me a lot of the Chris Reeves where you have to fight it a tad bit because of the detent. Wow, really a nice little sound there. On both ends. What's interesting is that it is a, a frame lock that feels kind of like a liner lock in the right way. It feels like a frame lock in a good way, and it feels like a liner lock in a good way, where you don't feel like you're gonna, like, gosh, look how small the tolerance is. Let me get that wheel back open so you can, actually, let me wheel it closed so you can see this. Look how sm like narrow that tolerance is on the frame lock. Like you almost can't even tell where it ends because it's so thin you have to like find it. That's really impressive. Um, so you don't feel like, unlike the hinderer, you don't feel like you're mistakenly gonna hold this while you're opening the knife, like yeah, a little bit. Like it's definitely possible, like, let's see. Yeah, it's definitely possible I'm doing it now, but like it's a little more natural now. The clip doesn't, sometimes on frame locks, you'll see the clip come over to here. The clip does go onto the lock, which I don't love, um, but it, I see why they do it, because it's kind of cosmetically they're doing it more than functionally, I think. You can see there's a significant portion of this knife dedicated to the cosmetics of this knife. But man, it actually feels really nice. Like I, I want to carry this knife. That's kind of the impression I get. And, you know, a lot of people talk about it, but this has a Rockwell hardness that's in the range where you can use this knife and it'll be okay. Let me give it a quick wipe. Let's see how that finish looks. I feel like my shirt's too dirty to wipe this knife with. Like I'm going to get dirtier. By, white, by trying to clean it. So I see like maybe one little scratch in there. But this finish is known to be so hard that you can really carry this and it'll end up kind of staying the same amazing look that it is here. I go, he go, whatever it is. I'm not sure if that number is model or if it's a count. So I'd have to do a little research. Maybe if I look at the paperwork now, we can discern if that's related to one or the other. You can see I can't even put the knife down. This is the first time I put the knife down since I got it in my hand. And if you've watched these videos before, that is not common. I'm usually grabbing a bunch of other knives. I have zero temptation to pull out other knives and compare it. That said, it is what I do on the show, so you're probably expecting it. Let's go with its opposite, more or less. The Benchmade bug out, much smaller knife, and sort of the opposite on fashion or function over fashion to that knife, to the Higo. Um, that may look, by the way, like there's something black in the. Uh, let me do that so that you don't see that black spot right there because that's not actually, that's just how reflective that knife is. A new out of box rat two, so I can't, or rat one rather, so it, it's kind of hard to open. So I try not to cut myself on this show, on this channel. Um, there you go. Let's see if we can get a little info on it before we keep comparing it against knives. So we'll take a little quick look into what it tells us. I'm pretty sure it'll tell us the rock wall hardness and stuff. There we go. Specifications. Registration number. I wonder if that is again a count there. There's a picture of the knife, which is cool. It oh wow, 66.7 Rockwell hardness. Oh, that's crazy. You got the weight on there. This is a September 20th, 2022 knife. So this is this video is being taken on October 31st. So this knife is very new, um, which is surprising to me. I did not expect that. I thought that this was something that someone had for a while. Um, 
So I just gotta, I guess, thank the seller for selling me such a new knife. Cause I didn't pay full price so that I'd pay off a website for it. Um, what a cool knife. Yeah, I've only had a couple knives on the channel where I open them and I kind of get a little speechless in some ways. And this is one of them. I love the box, by the way. You know, sometimes the little things really matter. Um, and this box just makes you feel like, and if you know anything about Japanese culture, this is so Japanese. They love how they package things and they love things being neat and orderly and efficient. That is, uh, I don't know if the word is love, but it's, it's a big part of the culture, let's say that, right? And I don't wanna generalize, everyone's different in every country, but this feels very Japanese, very light, but nice. So the packaging is actually really nice here. It kind of stands out to me as different than what I'm used to in a lot of ways. I'm trying to see what's in there. There's something in there, I think. Let's see what that is. Is it a tool? Yeah, there's a, a Torx tool in there. So that's kind of interesting. I wouldn't, I wouldn't expect that on this, but that actually brings up an interesting point about the knife, which is that the, uh, all the bolts and stuff are blacked out super nicely. I assume that's anodized, but I don't know for sure. They, it could be the material. I'd have to do some more research on the knife and follow up on that. I did not expect this to be the knife that was in the package when I opened it, so I didn't, didn't come prepared to this. This is not a full review. It's just an initial impression and unboxing. And in that sense, can you do the same things with these two? Yes. Is that, I don't know, on sale 25 bucks on Amazon or something like that? Yes. Is this 1,250? Yes. But from an emotional standpoint, this is a special, special knife. And if you have an opportunity to handle or own a Rockstead, I'd strongly recommend it. I'm trying to see what I have here. Is this a factory thing? You have to pull out a magnifying glass to get a look at that. I understand if that is a, uh, a flaw. or what, or damage or whatnot. Let's see if I can get some cool views and I really wanna get this out of here because I feel like that has spent too much time in this video. Now again, this was an EDC knife for the person I bought. No, I don't think it was an EDC, but I think it was carried. And I think, you know, look at this again. It's so hard to see because it's so reflective, but it almost looks like it's probably fine. It almost looked like it was a little, like the tip of it was broken off. So I'm gonna have to take a look at that. Oops, sorry. Uh, under a magnifying glass after the video and take a look. Let me also show this other side of the knife. Sorry, the computer screen is reflecting there. And yeah, I mean, just the thing of this knife is the fit and finish is on a level beyond anything I've owned. Except for a knife that's in my mind, but I won't say it because it could become a religious battle and it's not worth it. <laughs> but this is special.
I'm really excited to go look at this with my own two eyes instead of trying to look at it through the uh, through the lens of this camera and uh, pull out a magnifying glass and try and understand everything that's going on with it. But it feels really nice. Yeah, it's kind of like I got to pull out a Chris Reeves and go side by side with them. I was not prepared for this, but it feels like a really good side by side comparison to do.